I am expecting higher prices to come on Bitcoin. In this video, I'm going to be telling you exactly where those higher targets are. The local pullback that we are seeing is actually a long buying opportunity. So I'm going to be talking you through this trade setup. OK, exactly where we can have the stop loss invalidation and of course focused on those higher targets and the reasons why I have this local bullish bias. So this is going to be a very interesting one for you. I'll be sharing some knowledge, some, you know, really unique insights into the charts. So, yeah, pay attention, enjoy, and let's get ready to make some lovely profits together. Right. That's what we're here for. And it's to crush the charts and, uh, you know, walk away happy, smiley face with a load of profit. So uh, let's make that dream come true together, talking you through the trade update that I have today. I'm going to be picking up right where I left off yesterday's YouTube video for you all, where we were, of course, at the time trading at the range point of control. But we had this lovely fractal idea, right, where we had seen very similar price action in mid-September with the rise drop rise. At the time, we had, of course, seen the rise drop into those series of higher lows. And then we got to that range point of control. OK, so even from my early morning update that I'd done, this was around what 12 hours before <laughs> the YouTube update. But it was something we were very focused on. Right. We recognize this fractal idea and whether we're pulling it as a line on the chart, whether we're taking out the bars pattern. You know, this was the trading idea that we had to bring us up to those highs. OK. And then when we get to those highs, it's a matter of making an informed decision of do we want to short for an SFB or should we look for 29? Uh, 29 <laughs> 27,200 zone being our next level and I'll just give you a few insights into what I posted to my group as we were hitting these levels so we can see now we actually broke up through that range point of control took a long time actually took a very long time but we did get through it in the end up to you know those levels that we had marked at around 27,200 I've not shorted these levels I'll explain to you why now OK, so for me, it was fairly, you know, simple in the end what happened here. So as we basically came to that range point of control, uh, we can see we rejected off it a few times. Right. So we basically come up to the range point of control. We got a rejection. We got another rejection. But we basically started to form what I class as consolidation under resistance of the range point of control. So, you know, the first tap is definitely an acceptable short trade entry. OK, this is also a scope trade, very low term time frame trade entry that I took too. Uh, but I managed to recognize the signs and close that early, as I did post in the questions channel, uh, because I viewed this as actually not a re not a rejection from the range point of control, but actually consolidation under resistance, uh, which is bullish. It does lead you to believe higher prices are coming. OK, so remind, remember that. And if you need, write it down. Consolidation under resistance is bullish. OK, so with that information, you know, we got to close out of our shorts and, you know, expect higher prices to come and higher prices do start coming. We break through that range point of control and our focus is then on the high there uh, that was made the previous day. OK, so we come up to that high and we obviously, of course, just trading just below it. But I tell my team no short trades for me yet. You know, still obviously after the high. And then as we take the high, you know, later on, I tell my team once again, no short trades for me. And then obviously this is around 1 a.m. <laughs> in Asia time. So I went to bed, you know, still simply looking for higher prices and no short trades to be taken. Waking up here uh, to a lovely rise overnight and, you know, telling my team I'm not going to short this. $20,000 zone of resistance. I actually want to see the highs of the 19th of September taken out at the very least. OK, so that's how we have seen price come up to the range point of control, break up through those highs. And of course, what we were looking at mainly was at those highs. Do we get a short trade of an SFB? OK, or do we continue up towards 27,200? Well, in the end, as we took those highs, there was no short trade. So we look for 27,200 and those are the prices that we are coming into and bouncing off around right now. OK, so as mentioned, I've not taken a short trade at these levels, although, yes, actually for a very low term time frame sculpt trade, uh, there is the option. You do obviously as well have bullish divergence. <laughs> 
sorry, bearish divergences. You do have bearish divergences <laughs> uh, forming up at these highs. So this is what we can be definitely looking for a local pullback. But actually, I'm looking for this local pullback to a long opportunity uh, to bring us above those 19th of September highs. Right. So you can see the bearish divergences here actually with a lot of uh, new longs opening. So this is considered locally bearish but i'm instead of taking the short with this i'm looking for the long opportunity okay i'm kind of looking for the bigger play okay so i've you know if, you, if it isn't been clear already uh, i think you all understand if, if you understand my technical analysis and the way i trade it's always uh trade the charts ttc trade the charts right you hear me say this all the time and what does that mean i'd like to just spend a minute really explaining to you i've done it a lot of times but it never hurts to repeat right especially as you know the people watching this uh, yourself are are very interested in learning okay so what i mean by this is i always trade the charts and the data i have in front of me okay this is primarily looking at you know trading view and the order flow so on Monday, for example, I can be bearish, wanting to short, looking for lower. But as the week progresses, I, of course, receive new information from the order flow and data, which so shows bullish signs. So that by Friday, I update my bias to bullish and wanting to take long trades. Because I know some people, you know, they are confused how, you know, for example, on Monday, I can be saying I'm looking for lower bearish. And then by Friday, I'm saying I'm actually looking for higher prices. And I truly want you to understand that this is trading, okay? Um, I can have my biases, but at the end of the day, I will, of course, trade the charts. And if I have to update my bias because of new information that I've seen, that is, to be honest with you, the sign of a good trader. A bad trader would ignore the signs of bullishness with the higher lows forming and be so fixated on their bearish bias, wanting to be right, wanting to see lower. They will ignore all the bullish signs that are in front of them they'll ignore the consolidation under resistance they'll ignore the fractals that we have pointing to higher prices and they'll really simply be you know wanting to just be right rather than trading the charts so that for me is something that is important for me to show how i update my charts and bias but also for to teach you how you really got to do this so you know i was clear you know back when the 25th you know, I did want to see the weekly hit. You know, I wanted to see price down here. But as we started to build up these higher lows, I'm getting new information. I'm seeing new patterns and I'm seeing new data with the order flow. And so for me to then say, OK, I'm now looking for higher. I'm not shorting on this rise. OK, as I'm telling to my team very clearly, no short trades for me here. Continue to look higher. Consolidation under this point of control is bullish. You know, that is that is the sign of somebody that trades the charts. OK, so I'm happy to say when I'm wrong. OK, I'm happy to admit, um, you know, I missed, you know, the best long trade opportunity. But I as a trader know I've got another long opportunity today. I've got another opportunity next week. There's always another trade. So, yes, I did miss the long from the low, but I also did not lose any money by missing that long trade. I took a short trade, as you all know up at this high which ended in profits hit take profit one close the rest okay and so for me it's you know i just want to really emphasize that because I, I i do still feel, feel there's sometimes people especially the more inexperienced trader that doesn't understand how a trader can be um you know looking for shorts one week looking for longs the next it's simply because we look for the best trade opportunity and we look for the highest probability trade i am happy to take longs i am happy to take shorts i just want to go uh, for the best opportunity with the highest probabilities as a trader i understand the charts can move up the charts can move down i'm just interested in making profits i'm not so interested in the direction as long as that is securing me profits OK, so back to the charts and back to what I'm talking about on the higher term time frame, I still remain bearishly biased. OK, I'm still looking for short opportunities, as mentioned in yesterday's video. Right. You know, if I could see, you know, over twenty nine thousand, two big levels for me, twenty nine thousand four hundred, thirty thousand four hundred. And if I can see those levels hit with a very nice rise, you know, I'm a happy trader. Is that for me is the best short opportunities and in with my higher term time frame bearish bias right i can be looking for those shorts up at, at much higher levels and that means locally i would you know well 
I've made it clear. I'm not sure in at this price. I'd actually like to see higher locally. So that can mean I have a local bullish bias with a higher term time frame bearish bias. So these rises, I'm actually looking to short. OK, so right now we're we're really focused on the highs that we're put in here around the 19th of September. So if we put that on and then zoom in, what I really like about these highs is that I'm always a, a trade that's interested in swing failure patterns. So we have seen this pattern before where Bitcoin puts in these series of lower. Well, there's our first high. That's a lower high and a lower high again. So, of course, you've got a lot of uh, traders that will be looking to take the short right now at the confluence. And I'm never going to say this is a bad short trade. It's it's acceptable, right? It's just not one that I'm personally taking. But you're going to have a lot of traders that are basically going off of this idea of trend line rejection, trend line rejection, trend line rejection, another lower high. And they're going to be short in here where their stop loss is above the high. OK, I, again, I, I can understand why some people would take that. Right. So you got to be look, thinking of their thought processes. Stop. OK, entry here. Stop loss above the high target back down below those lows is acceptable. Why am I not taking it then? Well, personally, I prefer to take these type of trade setups above highs of swing failure patterns. So I'm actually going to be looking for this high to be taken out. So where everybody has got their stop loss above that high, I'm actually going to be looking for the entry. OK, and when I get the entry alert, what I do is I actually then zoom into the charts. OK, I come over here and look at the order flow and I make an informed decision based off of the delta, based off of the volume. OK, and the new things that I like looking at is actually the trade counts and the rec statistics. So these are volume type of statistics and data from the order flow that you can only get live in the time. And that's how when I had the alert go off. I will then come to my team and I'll either say, you know, upon taking that high here, I'll either say to my team, that's the high taken. We've got a bearish reaction. I'm now going to take the short trade or like we saw yesterday, that is the high taken, but I'm not going to short here. And that will be based off of the information I've seen from the order flow. So that will be the same decision process that I'll go through when we take this high. Have I got a nice bearish reaction where I will then look for the short trade or do I not get that and there's nothing bearish and I'll then simply look then for our continued higher price targets, right? So that's the way that I really like to trade it. And so we got these highs of the 19th of September back until the 31st onto the daily, right? Moving on to the, um, you know, the actual high of the 29th. And if we see the breakout there, well, that's where we can get this nice accelerated move above us. So. Uh, that's that for me is what I'm looking at. And then I'd like to explain, you know, where we can be then looking for that long opportunity I mentioned. So first of all, though, I did have a lot of questions yesterday about uh, Femex being X by bit uh, of what's going on. Of course, with the UK regulations, I'm just going to spend another few minutes because the amount of questions I had is just easier to address this in a video. Uh, the first question was, am I going to continue to use by bit order flow? Uh, or chart on buy a bit. Well, my, my actual um, you know, best case scenario, right, is actually going to be to stay on buy a bit. That is still my preferred exchange at the end of the day. And even though I am in the UK, there are obviously, you know, ways that you can try and get your KYC, um, you know, to, to continue trading there. So that, that's my like preferred option. Of course, I'm still going to do some more research, but that for me is my preferred option. Um, and the Bing X, though, this is a really interesting exchange that I'm still actually considering using even alongside it. And that is because of the uh, way I can actually be trading uh, cryptocurrency. So I have all the cryptocurrency market to be trading. Uh, and as well as trading uh, crypto, you can also trade a load of stocks here. So under your standard futures, we can also be looking to trade the stock market. So for me, this is like a very interesting exchange. Uh, having crypto and having stocks. So if I want to come over here and trade, uh, I don't know, let's just say Apple stocks, well, I can actually have that option here. If I want to trade the index, you know, we can see here how we have stocks, Forex indexes, commodities even. So you can be trading gold, you can be trading the S&P 500. This for me is a very interesting option. Uh, so I'm, you know, very... <laughs> I think I'm going to be using this, even, you know, alongside Bybit at the very least or, or fully on here if I can't get anything sorted. Of course, Femex is a nice uh, backup option as, you know, this this one's been around for a while and we all know the ins and outs of this exchange, right? So 
Um, as mentioned, um, you know, for those that are interested, we do have those deals for you, uh, which are just going to be simply left over on the website. You can access it via our website, clicking on deals, right? We got the Femex deposit bonus, of course, the big buy bit bonus at uh, a VPN if you need it. And, um, you know, the draw for Bing X, we can actually be winning an iPhone <laughs> and up to the $5,000 deposit bonus as well. So there's a lot of uh, deals that we managed to secure for you. This is because, of course, Chart Champions, we have a very good reach. All these exchanges, every exchange you can think of wants to work with us. The amount of emails um, that we get, like pretty much begging to work with us, we, we can hand select who we want to go with. And for me, Bing X was a, was a nice option with their uh, stocks and crypto. So we managed to secure you the best deal with them course the bybit deal as always is decent and the femex is like that option where if you want to ha have a you know that, that backup option it's always there um the other question that i was receiving is like why didn't i go for mexi why didn't i go for bitget uh i of course have my opinions on these exchanges uh you know we have deals out of my uh you know a lot of these exchanges beg to work with us but you know i've looked at bitget in the past and for me the the, the, the scammy tactics that they use just I wouldn't feel comfortable having my money in bit again. It's as simple as that. And, you know, Mexi is another one that always gets asked about, you know, they have good fees. But for me, that is a worrisome sign that their fees are almost like too good to be true. And I know some people are going to be upset by my comments, but these are my opinions. And it's it's where I'm going to put my money at the end of the day. Right. So if, if I think something looks a little bit like a Ponzi or scam, I'm not even going to risk putting money in there you know we all know how ftx went right everything looks good until it's not so if i even think a little bit mm, don't like that i'm not gonna risk putting my money there <laughs> so yeah i know people are asking bit get mixy um x you know x y and z exchange but you know uh, i'm not gonna risk putting my my money there to be honest with you so uh for now yeah these are the three exchanges that i've liked i will still can do will still do ongoing research i haven't finished yet uh but those are the current deals that we have if you want to take advantage of the affiliate signups right so um you know that's enough talking about that i think i don't think i want to mention anything else so i'll go over about the long trade setup that we have on a retracement so yeah final words on that yeah regulations are coming um this exchange being X, you can use in UK, you can use in USA. This is the most, um, you know, seems to be one where you can have the most access right now. Uh, bit get, I'm uh, sorry, with Bybit, of course, we have to be looking at, you know, potential workarounds for the UK and etc. But I'm going to be doing more research as mentioned. So anyway, I want to get back to the charts. Enough speaking about that. So on the long trade opportunity, of course, right now we do have those bearish uh, CVD divergences. Um here right now so that definitely can give us a more of a local pullback so i'll be using that for a long trade opportunity and what we actually have going on is a local range right now so we have a very well defined range low okay and we have our very well defined range high so i love to take up you know these are the best opportunities for me so for the long trade it's is the same as if we're looking on like a, a one day chart right we look for the move down to around the range low so that's coming in at around 26800 right so we'd actually be looking for a range low long off of around 26800 26700 right so we'd like to see that range low hit reclaim the range and that that's as simple as it comes that would be our long trade uh, entry trigger and again where would the target be it's coming back up to our highs from the 19th of September plus so that's the, that's it. you know it is as simple as that of course will I be looking at the order flow to confirm an entry the answer is yes uh will I tell my group if I take the long trade off of here the answer is yes and the first people to know will be the champions okay that have signed up to the membership via chartchampions.com it's where you get the daily live stream updates that's where you get the educational content that's where you get, of course, all of the live streams and everything that you need to become successful. So I will, of course, always update my team of the champions members first via the Discord. Um, so I will be looking at the order flow here to confirm. But as it stands, that's the trade that I'm looking at today. Not taking the short here, looking for the long on the retracement. We'll confirm the long trade entry to the champion members first, as always. Um, and that's basically what I'm looking at. So now... I've taught you through my local bias, my higher term time frame bias, why I'm looking for lower um, for a long trade entry only to then, you know, continue to bring this up in price. So locally, that means I'm bullishly biased. 
higher term time frame yeah still looking for a higher term time frame sure um but i've now explained my biases the trade setup the invalidation the targets why i am remaining bullishly biased so at least this target again if we blast through that target i'll continue to look for higher prices and let's see if we can get above twenty nine thousand dollars if we get the bearish reaction though of course that means i will lock in that short trade and uh, you know look to actually take that down much lower again and once one final time that would be given information to the champions via chartchampions.com if you've enjoyed this you know what to do head over to chart champions where you can sign up for the membership today uh, and get your trading journey on track into profits alongside us so i hope you've enjoyed i'm going to say thank you ever so much and i will catch you over inside of the discord cheers everybody thank you and that's me signing out goodbye